I'd like to bring to order the, t the Tiverton Town Council special meeting of November 16th. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. At this time, I'd like a moment of silence for the victims of the terrorism in Paris. Mrs. Mello. Councilor Souza. Councilor Perry. Present. Councilor Mello. Present. Councilor Lambert. Present. Councilor Demadiris. Present. Councilor Shabbat. Present. Council Pelletier? Yes, ma'am. All present. At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing of the Tiverton Town Council on the proposal by Twin River Worldwide Holdings Incorporated for a casino in Tiverton, Plot 203, Plot 111, Plot 204, Plots 101, 102, 101, 102, 103, 106, and 108 west side of William Canning Boulevard. At this time, anyone who would like to speak, please come to the microphone. Would anyone from the public like to speak? Before speaking, please state your name and your address. Thank you. Looks like I'm first, right? Um, Madam President and Town Council members, my name is Roger Belanger. My family and I live at 125 Stafford Road. Thank you for the opportunity to address not only my concerns, but that of the residents regarding the Tivina Casino proposal. Job creation. The details of the proposed jobs are not being properly articulated. The claim of a total compensation package is regularly confused by the general public with salary. The actual hourly wage being offered here is approximately $6 an hour, as stated by the uh, Twin Rivers uh, representation. An additional concern is the fact that these workers will inexplicably, inexplicably be forced to work in an environment that exposes them to secondhand smoke, putting their health at grave risk. To review, a $56,000 compensation package is in reality $6 an hour wage. There's no guarantee to employ Tiverton residents and employee exposure to secondhand smoke. Tax benefits. With the additional revenue, while the additional revenue may allow us to buy some new equipment or provide some modular new services, property taxes will very likely remain unaffected. The Lincoln representatives stated as much to this council. It's interesting to note that at a state level, Rhode Island appears to be in line to subsidize also known as corporate welfare, Twin Rivers income at the rate of $500,000 a year through 2026, as noted in a re recent news report. Rhode Island Representative P Patricia L. Morgan, Deputy Minority Leader and Conference Policy Chair was quoted as follows during the recent discussions on the po possibility of a new tolling system on Rhode Island State Roads. Twin Rivers just bought Newport Grand. It's a private company. They knew what they were buying. They should have done their homework. They shouldn't be coming to taxpayers and asking for a half a million dollars so they can make a little more profit. That was by Representative Morgan. How, this, how Twin Rivers can justify reaching into the pockets of state residents is, uh, I, can't, I can't understand how that's allowed. To review, property taxes will remain, likely remain unaffected. Twin Rivers is in line for corporate welfare of $500,000 annually through 2026, and there's no guarantee of the amount of tax relief to the town. Traffic improvements. This proposal will have a disastrous effect on access to the town from Route 24 and William Canning Boulevard. There are several new businesses opening on the Fall River Line that are already re wreaking havoc on the border. A convenience casino with its in and out flow of traffic in the area will only worsen the situation. Furthermore, Tiverton is not in a position to plan any required border traffic improvements on the Fall River side of the border. There is no win here for area residents. To review, proposed traffic improvement is not related to this proposal at all, despite the inclusion in all of the uh, presentations. And the casino traffic will f uh, further complicate an increasingly bad situation at the Fall River border, which cannot be controlled by Tiverton residents. Safety and security. 
The safety and security concerns in this area will change dramatically. The best defense offered when discussing Lincoln Twin Rivers crime, such as muggings, is that these are random events such as those could occur anywhere. There is no crime currently in the wooded area on, on, on uh, with the proposed area for the gambling facility. Hence, the indisputable fact that crime will increase in the area. Testimonials presented by the Lincoln Police Department and the fire chief regarding their experience cannot be considered objective or valid for two reasons. First, they have no perspective of Lincoln as a non-gambling town. Secondly, the personal income and of, of the department members and the equipment acquired are the direct result of the relationship with the casino. To review, no crime at the property at this time, increased traffic equals increased risk, introduction of, in, the introduction of additional impaired drivers to the local roadways pre presents a problem, and its proximity to an economically depressed area. I'm very close to being done. I know you, I see you're watching, you're watching. <laughs> Um, environmental protection. Trees and other plant life will be destroyed. Animals will be displaced. However, if the reality is that some sort of development here is in inevitable in the future, it should be for something of higher value to the region. This proposed casino adds no value to society, creates no product, provides no education, cures no ills, and fails to add to the overall quality of life in the region. Any proclamations regarding any concern for the town of Tiverton or its residents by Twin Rivers should be viewed in that context. The sole purpose of this facility is to generate an obscene amount of revenue for its shareholders. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having this conversation. To review, the loss of the natural environment with, with nothing to value the, the community in return. That's a big loss. The town identity. The introduction of a gambling facility would forever change the identity of this town to that of a gambling town. The town of Lincoln, Rhode Island is known throughout the region as the home of a casino. None of the other fine attributes of Lincoln are able to overcome that fact. The hardworking residents of Tiverton deserve better. We should bring, work to bring projects into this town we can all be proud of. Lastly. Pretty close. Yeah. Um, the amenities is, such as the restaurant and the bar and hotel. A, a restaurant, and bar, and hotel simply magnify all the concerns, concerns I've noted so far. Other proposals uh, related to possibly outside terraces will add to the noise pollution in the area and be another source of secondhand smoke. A secondary but very real concern to consider is the propag further propagation of big business <coughs> into the area. It's very easy to envision other enterprises monitoring the increased traffic in this area and its commercial possibilities. These enterprises will attempt to scoop up existing small business properties and work to buy out pro private properties in the hope to commercialize them. Of course, if this is allowed to happen, this type of progress will only continue to negatively impact the town's identity. There's also the mistaken notion that increased commercialization of the area can only be good for local businesses. Casinos take every opportunity to ensure that every patron dollar is left in the casino. They don't want anybody walking out the door with money in their pocket. Patrons will not be, re will not be venturing deep into town to support all the other businesses. Overall, it's an adverse effect on local business and the ad additional loss of, society, uh, of identity and again, with these additional amenities of further safety, security, and environmental concerns. To close, I think we can all agree that things are not perfect in Tiverton. That being said, it's inc incumbent upon each of us, elected officials and residents alike, to put forth an effort to improve the situation. There are no quick fixes or easy answers. A Tiverton casino is not the answer to the problem problems that exist. My appeal to the town council is to end this casino proposal now rather than put the town and its residents through a long, drawn out and costly and emotionally draining process. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Madam President, members of the committee. My name is Tim Byrne. I live at 140 Evans Ave in Tiverton. Um, I've lived in this town for 56 years. I've lived on Stafford Road for 35 of it. In past meetings I've gotten before you, and I've mentioned that uh, my job, I'm the business manager for the Plumbers and Pipefitters Union. And I say that through disclosure because it's part of my job that I'm here. 
I'm here to support uh, people who would like to use our companies and put our members to work. The main reason I'm here, though, is because I travel all over Rhode Island, the 39 cities and towns, and in Massachusetts, 69 cities and towns, and I deal with a lot of developers and, and a lot of situations exactly like this, on nights just like this. And this is the only group of people that have taken the time to say to the town, what do you want? We would like to bring our business here, but how do you want us to do it? What do you want it to look like? What are your concerns? And I think they've done a, a very good job of answering those concerns. We had a concern over water pressure. It was answered with a storage tank. We had a concern over traffic. And again, Mr. Belanger mentions that's a, that's, that is a terrific part of town. For, I've only gotten in one accident in all the miles I put on in a year, and it was right there where the road splits. That's the only time. So they're working with the state, as we know how the state works, uh, to solve that problem. And I think they've given us the assurances that that problem will be solved. I think that this is going to be very good for the town. It certainly does diverse our tax base. I have three children that went through the school system, as did I. None of them live in town. They can't afford to live here. We've chosen to live here because this is, what we, this is where we grew up. This is our town. I think this council's done a terrific job. You forced these people to give us the answers. You vetted this situation a tremendous amount. And I think you've done a good job on it. You had concerns, they answered them. Now it's, now it's time for us to step up and make our decision. And I, I think that should be the decision of this council. To put it to the people of this town and this state to say, these are the facts. We brought them out. What do you want to do? Because remember, as we went through the same process with the budget committee and with our financial town meeting, it's better to get more people involved than a small amount of people involved. And that's been proven to work very well. So I ask the council, please let the people of this town and this state decide whether we would like, to con like this casino here. You've done a good job. Now it's time for us to do our job. Thank you. Thank you. De Dennis DeMori, uh, 1135 Stafford Road. I had uh, brought a letter to the, uh, town to the town clerk this morning. I'm not sure whether you have a copy of it. I'll just read it to you now, and then I'll be done. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to request that, th that the council consider a motion to delay its vote on the Twin, Twin River Casino Hotel until the Rhode Island Department of Transportation has completed its review of the, tr of the Twin River traffic study which has yet to be done. They have, not, they have not done that study yet. The reason for making this request is that if uh, the Department of Transportation determines that the present roundabout design is inadequate to handle the volume of increased traffic uh, from the Casino Hotel and that a four-lane roadway, two, two lanes in either direction, is required, then there has to be some cooperation with the state of Massachusetts because from the state line, to, uh, to be on Tedeschi's is only one lane at that point. So we would have four lanes coming from the end of Route 24 down to one lane by Tedeschi's and then up to four lanes again, you know, to, to en entering into Rhode Island. So th that, com that presents a completely unmanageable situation from a, from a traffic perspective. So what I would like to see is I would like to see the traffic study done, have it reviewed by the Department of Transportation. If, if they agree that the existing design is adequate, then let's vote on it and, and go about our business. But if they determine that it's not and that four lanes are required in order to manage this traffic situation, then Massachusetts has to be involved in this process of, of this design. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? <coughs> Thank you, Madam President. Mike Burke, um, Durfee Road, and also here on behalf of the Tiverton Democratic Town Committee. I'll be very brief because you have a letter from us in your packet, or you should. Um, I want to do one thing before that and commend the council 
on the process that you've helped make sure has happened so that everyone can have good information and good feedback has been given. And um, as Tim said, there's been a lot of give and take. And I want to commend Twin River on the process they, that they've engaged the community in, which is very different than other processes that have happened here lately. And very briefly, um, the Tiverton Democrats are not taking a position on the pros and cons of a casino, but we do believe, as other, others have said, that it's important that you put this forward um, to the legislature uh, so that the citizens of Tiverton and the citizens of the state can vote on this um, project. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Mike. Would anyone else like to speak? Good evening. My name is William Fish. I live at 15 John Street. I also work at Twin Rivers up in Lincoln. Um, I'm proud of what I do. I, uh, I clean machines. I pick up the trash. I clean toilets. And for the idea that anyone's getting $6 an hour, it's ridiculous. I make $60,000 a year doing this job. I have a great medical program. I have a great retirement program. They're taking pretty good care of me. I think uh, Tiverton, if they don't pass this, they're going to miss an opportunity that can help expand this, this community. And uh, I'm quite happy working up there. Thank you. Thank you. You want a copy of uh, my you can remarks? Give it to the clerk. To the Tiverton Town Council, my name is Todd Moore, and I reside at 991 Sipout Avenue, in Tiverton. I'd like to express my objection to the proposal to allow Tiverton to become a host town for a gambling casino. My concerns are based on both the financial and social moral dimensions that arise by the civic sanctioning of gambling. A casino, more specifically a convenience casino, draws its revenue from a limited geographic area. You could draw a radius out from the proposed location in all directions for a distance of perhaps 10 to 15 miles to reflect the bulk of the population required to make the casino feasible. Too far and the facility is competing with the larger venues of Twin Rivers and the pr proposed casino in Taunton. So all the money spent and lost by the customers would flow out from that area and to where? Some would go to maintain the facility and pay the employees, some of whom may live in Tiverton, but there's no set guarantee for this. Much would go to the corporation, management, and shareholders of Twin Rivers. A fair amount would also go to the state of Rhode Island. Some would indeed go to Tiverton. However, all this revenue does not come from any added value of goods processed or services rendered. It is simply a redistribution scheme to move money out of one geographic area. It is a negative sum game. What goes out is much, much more than what comes back. Thus, by its nature, gambling is a parasitic activity, a parasitic leeching activity, which in our case requires an aptly described host municipality. What is sad is that Tiverton would become a complicit in the state sanctioned scheme to drain money from our area, including from residents of our town, as we are certainly within the target radius of the casino. A dollar lost at a casino is a dollar that doesn't get spent for something tangible at Humphreys or Coastal Roasters or CVS or any of the other myriad businesses, businesses, small and large, that make up our town. Now, the argument is made that the state is only making money from an activity that used to be illegal and that by controlling it, the socially and morally negative effects can be mitigated. A state bureaucracy is necessary to oversee this activity and the state exercises monopoly oversight. In this description, there is the implicit reasoning that it is an activity that must be controlled. If it was just legal and any bar could have poker tables and slot machines, that would somehow not be good, but only for the state's need for money. Try this exercise when considering the social aspects of gambling by comparing it to other activities that in some states have become legal. What if, as in Nevada, Rhode Island decided that the legalization of prostitution would be beneficial to our finances? How about the legalization of marijuana with strict state controls? 
would the residents of Tiverton be comfortable with these activities? Would we want to rely on these activities to finance our needs? We want, would we want our children working in these industries? The casino would add money to the coffers of Tiverton, no doubt, but these additional resources would require more administrative bureaucracy to collect, administer, and allocate. In any case, there's no guarantee that the, the town would see anywhere near the riches promised. According to the Sakana Times article of November 12th, quote, if this array of financial benefits to Tiverton does not get through the General Assembly, Twin River Chairman Mr. Taylor said, we're committed to withdrawing the proposal. Really? Does the town have that in writing? Does the town have anything in writing? Do we really wish to go through this whole exercise in public argument and flim flammery to end up with what? A sad and dreary convenience operation designed to separate the poor and the desperate of mostly Fall River from a few of their dollars. Does Tiverton really want to be that kind of place? I urge you to reject the, propo the proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, um, my name is Chris McDonough, 108 Pelletier Lane. Uh, I didn't come here expecting to talk, but uh, I think I'm speaking more out of a selfish point of view. Uh, my wife and I moved here four years ago. Uh, we wanted to move here and raise a family, and we now have a one-year-old son. And um, I drive down Stafford Road. We come down Pelletier Lane. We live right on Stafford Pond. It's quiet. It's beautiful. Get a little light from Fall River. Um, but I just don't want a casino in my backyard. I don't want my son to grow up in that. Thank you. Barbara Pelletier, Bonnefield Drive, and in case you missed my article this weekend in the several of the papers, I think that Tiverton has once again been offered an opportunity to expand our tax base, and we should very, very enthusiastically welcome that. Uh, during this last six months, the company has shown, Twin Rivers has shown an immense sensitivity on how the community uh, wishes this casino to be built. It has held a, a number of meetings, on many, many meetings, and they've really had a class act presentation. I mean, we've even had snacks and air conditioning here. I mean, how much better can it get? This proposal is actually at an absolutely fantastic time. We are faced with so many costly obligations. We have the landfill closure, critically needed repairs on the high school, middle schools, the library bonds, and we will have this sewage service that we are still trying to figure out, and especially our roads are in dire shape. Uh, allegedly, as rumor has it, we have an, quite a number of housing units coming in which will generate children, which will um, impact our schools even more. We need more money. Our homeowners are stretched to their maximum almost, and we're still waiting for the great miracle at the industrial park, which we really don't have any certainty of. So just let's welcome the Twin Rivers team. They have a timeline. We know how it's going to happen. There's no if somebody gets a loan, they will build and the, you know, all of that. Um, they have a wonderful design, and lastly, we'll also get a hotel, which we've never had before, and the hotel will fit right into uh, our governor expanding tourism, and we might get people to our shores and stay at the hotel and, 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 and that way grow our economy. And while all of this is happening, I, I assume that some of the people hired to work on this project will be local, and that is an immense boost to the local craftspeople as well as local suppliers. So that, again, I think we should not forget. <laughs> and, and all in all, I think it's an, a great fit for everybody, and I hope you vote yes. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Hello. I want to congratulate you all up there for all the work you do. I've been a, a manager 
uh, a coach for 25 years in Tiverton. Uh, it takes a lot of effort that you don't realize sometime to do a lot of things. So I want to commend you for everything you do up there. Sir, My name is Robert LaChapelle. Uh, I live at 22 Pierce Court, Tiverton, Rhode Island. I'm an independent contractor. Uh, it's, I've been in Tiverton for 46 years. Paying the taxes go up every year. We need to get some kind of a break in Tiverton. And to pass this up, I think it's a big mistake for Tiverton. I think it's a, it's a real good idea. Uh, there's been no crime in, uh, in Newport Grand. I've been there for a good many years doing a lot of projects there. And everything's, we've had no problems. So all that about the crime and all that, that's, it's not happening. Uh, they got security for anything that stepped out of line. And I just want to say, uh, it's a open our eyes and let's do something good for Tiverton. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jim O'Dell. I'm on Warren Avenue here in Tiverton. And I also would like to commend the council on vetting this whole process. Twin River has done a very good job as opposed to some other projects that have come down the pike lately at explaining and being very sensitive to what's needed by the people and what's brought up during the charrettes. This is a win-win for the town. All you have to do is drive through Lincoln. I've personally had conversations with the chairman of the budget committee. Lincoln does not pay interest for bonds for capital improvements. That alone would save Tiverton approximately $600,000 a year. And done properly, we could get on a, a system similar to Lincoln where all the roads in town are paved every five years, all of them. I drove in Lincoln for two hours and couldn't find one pothole in one street anywhere. They have all new shiny vehicles, all new engines and ladder trucks and everything in their fire department. Their, their municipal vehicles are in excellent condition. And yes, their tax rate has not changed, but that is because the system that Lincoln uses is they take that 10.6 million they got last year from Twin River and they put it into several piggy banks to make improvements. They have a capital improvement account they pay cash for their, for their capital needs. They pave their roads out of a paving account. They also have an emergency piggy bank that if something comes up, they have money to fix things without going to bond. This is a win-win for the people. And for anyone that doesn't know it, we are nationally ranked in the top 2% for residential tax burden. We need something. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? This gentleman's coming too. Good evening. Uh, my name is Scott Broey. I live at 50 Ledoux Lane right here in Tiverton. Uh, Madam President, members of the committee, thank you. Uh, and thank everybody for speaking. I've been watching this on the sidelines. Uh, and, and it's tough. You know, I hear murmurs as I'm walking down. I don't know what people think of me. There's, there's nothing. But I will say that I disagree uh, with a casino. Uh, I'm going to turn around and look just real quick. Uh, probably one of the youngest people in the room. Uh, and by trade, I'm, I'm an IT project manager. Uh, I've seen projects that come in. I've seen vendors that come in very well prepared. And it never ends up like the promises. Uh, it's, it's a tough call. I do agree that the vote should be with the people because that's democracy. However, I want to come up here and, and state my preference that I wouldn't like a casino here. It's a short-term win, if that, uh, because in Twin Rivers proposal, they're putting that onus back on you, uh, as we've heard from Mr. O'Dell, 
on what to do with that money. Uh, I just don't see it, and that's the viewpoint I wanted to bring. Uh, I think there are a lot of things that Taverton could do. I have brought people from work. I work in Providence for Johnson & Wales University. Uh, no affiliation, but I've brought my coworkers from Providence here for a lunch at the Black Goose, uh, for coffee at Coastal Roasters. Uh, we purchase things from Milk and Honey Bazaar. All those things, they don't come down. Uh, they'll never see that from Stafford Road. That's not anything past getting business into the casino and process back out. Uh, I just think we can do a little better. Uh, it's going to be tough. There's probably going to be some foresight. And you know, I, I feel for you guys because you're up here having to take this all in and, and make some decision. But that's my opinion, and I appreciate your time. And certainly everybody else is here time in this tough issue. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. My name is Richard Mayoza. I live at 55 Watupper Avenue, which is about a mile from where this post casino is. And I want to say that I'm 100% for it. I think this town Absolutely. I've been here for 30 years. We've been talking about what we can get, and it's all well and good to say we should be looking for better product. Maybe we're looking for manufacturers, but those things don't exist. The economy and the world today has changed. Yes, a casino is not the answer to all problems, but where they are, in a lot of cases, they are part of the solution. We need to get a tax base improved. Now, we're going to cap this landfill, from my understanding, within a couple of years. Whether or not we have enough of money to actually pay for that, that's one issue. But here's the second issue you may not be aware of. The landfill closes, and we have to now use the recycling facility in the middle of the state. Well, they're going to double the tipping fees. So not only are you not going to have the landfill to get rid of your trash, you're going to pay double what they're asking for right now when the time comes. We need to be forward thinking. We need to be forward looking. But more important than that, my understanding, and I was here for the proposal last week. I, I was here for the entire proposal. I saw the whole thing. I'm not sure how many people here did. But they assured us, number one, they would not build that casino unless the rotary got built. So if you weren't here last year, last week, you need to know that. They assured us in their proposal, unless the rotary gets built, they're not going to build that casino. Traffic issues, water issues with the city of Fall River and the state of Massachusetts, those are not going to be a big problem. But again, what I do want to say is that I think what we're voting for here tonight, what the council voting is voting for here tonight, is whether or not we're going to allow this to become a vote on the ballot. Now, that's different, you see, because many, many people cannot attend these meetings. There are a lot of town residents that may be opposed to or may be pro for this casino. But they don't have the opportunity to come here and speak about it. But they can cast their vote. They can make their yes or no vote on the ballot. And that's what you guys, from my understanding, are going to decide tonight. You saying yes tonight does not mean that that casino is going to be built in Tiffin and Rhode Island. Doesn't mean that. It simply means that we're going to give the opportunity to all the citizens in this town to decide one way or another what they want. And that, I think, is important. We have really hurt ourselves with, with potential development in the past. There are not a lot of opportunities to get out of there. The economy is not getting good enough for us to establish anything that's going to be worthwhile. Now, they're guaranteeing us $4 million. How are they doing that? Well, basically, to be honest with you, it's going to be three. If you weren't here last week, it's three million guaranteed by the state and probably a million in property taxes and, and other taxes from the casino itself. Now, I don't care how you look at it. One of the, one of the uh, counselors out here, Mr. Souza, was a little dubious with whether or not the state's going to actually back that proposal up. However, I think that that, that being the good citizen that Twin River has been in this state, I think they have enough influence with the, with the legislature to make sure that that happens. If that happens, that's $4 million in guaranteed revenue. Guaranteed 
revenue. And that can be used in any number of ways. There are a whole bunch of solutions that came out of here tonight. And I'm sure you guys will put that to good use. But I am definitely for this proposal. I think it's time. I mean, they put it together in a way where you don't even know that casino is there. I didn't even know that land had existed for development. Uh, they did a hell of a job. If you didn't see that presentation, you missed out on something really good. They did one hell of a job of putting that proposal together. I'm for the casino, and I hope you vote for all the citizens in Tiverton to at least have an opportunity to say yes or no. Thank you. Thank you. Cecil, you gonna beat Sally? Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm gonna get here first, but I'm gonna be very brief. Um, Cecil Leonard, Neck Road, um, just to, as everybody is, I'm sure knows, the issue is to put it on the ballot, put the proposal on the ballot. Uh, doesn't guarantee there's gonna be a casino. Uh, certainly the casino has some question marks about it. There's um, I happen to share Mr. Sue's skepticism about uh, the state guaranteeing thing. Um, I've been around long enough that I've seen state guaranteed money come, and I've seen it disappear. Um, so I'm, I, jo I join Mr. Sousa. But I do urge you to put it on the ballot. Uh, certainly there are some questions that have to be uh, sorted out. But by putting it on the ballot, we would have until November of 2016 to really vet it out further. I do want to take a moment to uh, compliment the folks from Twin Rivers. Uh, the way they approach this situation is a textbook example of how to do something right. Uh, they were a class act, and no matter what happens, uh, I want to appreciate their effort on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Sally Black, 64 Broadview Drive, probably one of the oldest people in this room I'm proud to be. Um, I've been on the school committee for 11 years. I've sat with many of you people every budget season with budget committee trying to work out reasonable budgets for police, fire, DPW, everybody. We want the best schools in the state. We want the best police and fire. We want to keep our police officers, our firefighters here to work. And that's what we've been trying to do. So I know only one thing. This town of Tiverton is amazing, but we need tax relief. We need the taxes to come off the backs of the residents and onto somebody. I don't care who else it is. If it's a commercial development that fits into the town, if it's these people that have been so thoughtful, that's the one thing I'm sure of. We need tax relief, and please put this out to the people. But when you do, inform them and inform Twin River and the state of Rhode Island that Tiverton's going to get what we deserve. Tiverton's not going to be hoodwinked into the state getting all the money. I was there one night in the middle of the night, 2 o'clock in the morning of the General Assembly, and I'm sitting there listening to this slippage clause, and I said, what are they talking about? If they don't make the money, the state's going to pay it up, things like that. We don't want to hear that. These people have worked very hard on this council, hours and hours up in it. Every hearing, every hearing for everybody. And I know we need tax relief, so please put it to the people. Thank you. Thank you. Would any other members of the public like to speak? There's a lot of you out there. If you want to say something, now is your opportunity. Yeah. I'm Tina Salome from Indian Point Road down in Tiverton, near Tiverton Four Corners. I think people of Tiverton, you need to wake up. We're putting lipstick on a pig. A, t a casino is a casino is a casino. Why does Newport not want full gaming tables in their town? I think Nick Mattiello and Teresa Piveweed, they're all for it. They've given endorsements to this. 
it's not going in their district. There is no way that this is going to benefit the people of Tiverton. Your taxes are not going to go down. Not going to go down. That, is anybody going to say to you, this is, you, you can keep an extra $2,000 next year from your tax, for your tax relief? It's going to be a nightmare getting through this area. And I think, you know, the, the people from Twin River have been polite. I think that their um, groups were very well designed to have people that were select for their purposes who were able to um, put forth a, a favorable view. I think it's been very, very well done, but I think it's a sleeper. And every single person I talked to said, oh, there's no way a casino would go through in Tiverton. Oh, no, 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 when it goes to the ballot. But I think people don't realize how close this is to going to the ballot and how close this could happen. And I think Twin River's done a good job, and I think they've been a class act, but I don't think there's any way we should have a Tiverton a casino in this bucolic, beautiful town. I, I think it would be a shame. So, thank you. Thank you. Connie Fleckenstein, 58 Cottage Avenue, Tibetan. 1,000 tables. Who's going to sit at 1,000 tables? I had an experience where my daughter and I went to Foxwoods. It was in the afternoon, and it was all senior citizens, some of them on oxygen, and they're pushing little walkers. And I'm wondering, what are these people gambling with? I'm on a fixed income. I can't afford to gamble. I like my money in my pocket. And 83 bedrooms or 83 rooms for a hotel? That's going to be astronomical. 40 acres, that's going to be astronomical. And you're not going to see wildlife. You might see a rabbit or something like that. But you're not going to see wildlife. I have to say, this is not a good image for Tiverton. I can't say any more, except it's just not a good image for Tiverton. Thank you. <laughs> Brief. I apologize, but I've heard this uh, many times in our meetings with, with regards to the Tiverton proposal of the casino. People are saying that, well, if Newport doesn't want it, that should tell you something right there. Let me explain something to you. Newport is a tourist town. They don't want that casino. They have other interests. They're bringing other things in that town. Tiverton doesn't have that situation. Okay, that's the reason why, that's the reason why Newport doesn't want the casino. It has nothing to do, and, and their way of getting rid of the, the, the casino was to vote against table games, because table games are a good percentage of revenue for any casino. It's that simple. But you need to be understanding of that. That's not a way to look at this situation. Oh, Newport doesn't want the casino, it must be terrible. Not the case. They're looking at going in different directions. That's a major, major tourist town, and they are. They're known around the world, and we should be thankful to have them in, in the state we live in, by the way. But anyway, I, I just need to say that because I've heard that particular comment too many times. And the, the, the lady that just came up before, there may be 40 acres involved, but they're only going to develop, what, 20, uh, eight, I forget, how much? Yeah, half of it. So it's not, it's not going to be as big as you think it's going to be. And they did a great job with that proposal once again, and I'm sorry, but thank you. Anyone else from the public would like to speak? Good evening. Thanks for the opportunity to talk. 
My name is Steve Jackson. I live at 176 Colonial Avenue in Tiverton. Uh, I'm a newcomer to town. I've only been here 38 years. <laughs> uh, and I'm not a gambler. But I think I've spent some time driving out west. And I've seen ghost towns. Now, why do ghost towns turn into ghost towns? The central moneymaker for people goes out of business. You see that in the steel belt. You see it out in Ohio. And then the people lose their jobs. The town doesn't have money to put up good schools. The house values start to fall. This town has had several things presented to it. I won't get into what they are. Some have been good, and frankly, some of them have been bad. Okay? But somewhere along the line, you have to balance residential growth with economic growth. And if you don't do that, you're going to have a non-functional town. And none of us want a non-functional town. <laughs> now, the second thing is, who are you dealing with? Well, if you want to see who you're dealing with, you drive into Providence and drive up 146, and you look at Twin River. I've seen casinos in Oklahoma that I wouldn't walk near, <laughs> okay? But that is a beautiful campus that they have created. It's a first-class operation. And the, evidently, the people who govern Lincoln have taken a very wise approach to the finances. They have used some of it to reduce taxes. But they have put in these sinking funds, which you've all heard about, so that if they need capital expenditures, well, there's one thing that's always sat in the back of my head. And you've probably all seen these situations where they have taken schools in New York City, generally poor, disenfranchised kids, and said, I'll make you a deal. You do well in your studies. You get an A average, or a, you know, let's be reasonable, a 3-5 average. And we'll guarantee you a college education. If we had $4 million a year coming into this town, we could take a half a million of it, put it in a sinking fund, and every kid that graduated from Tiverton High School, you could guarantee him three, four, five thousand, and maybe more for him to pursue college and better himself. So I would like to say that I'm in favor of it because at 77 years old, I'd like to see my taxes go down a bit. Okay, you're smiling. You'd like to see yours go down too. Uh, that's about all I have to say, but I think those are some things to think about. You're dealing with a good operator, you can go see that. You know we need a tax base. Let the people decide. That's what this hearing's about, is the gentleman so well presented. I think he's right. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening, Renee Jones, 161 Highland Road. Um, I actually have an informational question that I wanted to ask the people from Twin River. Um, because we're focused so much on the November election, what happens next? Because everybody keeps talking about this $3 million, $4 million. How soon do we see revenue starting to come into this town? And how long is it going to take to get to that $4 million? Because I just, I just think, 
I need to know that um, before I make a decision one way or the other. I mean, there will be immediate impacts, um, but I don't know what their time frame truly is in terms of when the benefits really do start coming into the town. So if they could help me out with that. Mr. Taylor. So if the, try not to talk with my hands. So if the, uh, if the vote were successful in November of 2016, we would be uh, expecting to be live by July of 2018, uh, and the benefits would start flowing at, uh, at that point. Thank you. Now you come. So right now you just have an option to purchase the property, and so, so in twenty in um, twenty sixteen when you purchase the property, I would assume that we would be it, that property would be assessed maybe at a higher rate, so we would be starting to get money um, as soon as you purchase the property. Um, have you any idea? what that would be? I don't think we do, is that? Well, I, I just think it's, you know, it's the kind of thing where, you know, the devil's in the details. So right. I, I kind of need to know a little bit more in terms of when the money comes in, how much money that's going to be, what we're going to be expending in the meantime, because there may be expenditures that we have to do. I, I don't know. That's I don't why I'm asking. there would be any expenditures we'd have to do. I do know, and I think I'm correct in this, that once the building is up and running, um, the taxes will be about 800000 they're estimating, a year from um, that facility. Up to that point, I'm really not sure. Does anyone have any? Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't know. I, I would like to know. It would be whatever's up there. So, so you are correct. When we assume uh, ownership of the land and begin construction, I think it will be assessed through the construction period right. differently. I'm not sure how that works. Uh, but it, one, one of the things that uh, one of the things that I think we need to be reminded of is there's a long time between now and next November, uh, and there'll be uh, ample time for the voters to have to ask these questions and to answer them as best we can uh, through the next 12 months. Which is one of the reasons why we came to you so early, so that there'll be plenty of time to vet the proposal uh, that we have in front of you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the audience? Any other Denise, questions and comments from the audience? Denise, before we leave that subject, can I just get a clarification? We're talking about $800,000 in tax revenue for the real estate property tax, and that's for the casino and the hotel and the site it sits on? Okay, so at where our tax rate is about 20 per thousand, which is about 2%, that would, that would imply a value of about $40 million, which you're going to spend 75 to build it? Yeah. I think what we uh, estimated using Lincoln uh, as an example is that the site would probably be in the $10 million range for the land, and then the improvements would be added to that. And I think that your estimate is, is probably close. I'd have to double check it, but it, that's probably in the ballpark. All right. So this is just a clarifying question. So you expect to spend $75 million to acquire the site and do site work and improve the site with two buildings, and you think the day you open it's going to be worth $40 million? Yeah. Well, you don't, you don't use the tax assessors don't use reproduction value as to value the site. They usually use a... Uh, a comparable sales method mm -hmm. or an income method. So, and we've been through this with Lincoln before. Um, it, the, the value in the site is not the casino license. It's a casino site, but the casino license has a, d a separate value. So we'd have to work with the assessor's office and the solicitor's office to arrive at that. But we're not looking for any type of tax treaty or anything like that. It'll be whatever it's assessed at, we'll have to pay. Okay. And right now, the property is an open space. Uh, tax uh, classification, so they, they pay next to nothing for it now. Any other comments from the audience? Questions? 
Any other comments or questions from the audience? I will. Oh. Good evening. My name is Mariana Pickett. I live at 112th Captain Circle, right next to Stafford Road. I know there were two young gentlemen before me who spoke about the traffic problem, and I don't want to go into it in depth again. But how would that work? How um, would you work together with MassDOT in order to solve the problem that's farther down? I did like uh, the solution with the roundabout, and that was done perfectly. However, we right now have people who cross yellow lines, who drive back and forth with Tedeschi, and across the street coming off 24. And how would you go about uh, working with another state in that, with this problem? Because we're getting the Harbor Mall renovated too down the road, so there will be more traffic again. Um, so far, you have solved the problem wonderfully on one side, but 100 yards away, we have still a really thick traffic problem. So um, how would you address that? Someone from Twin Rivers will do that for me. All right. Uh, Todd Brighton with Bryant Associates. Uh, we did the traffic study for the development. Um, in our analysis of, of the casino and, and what's moving forward, we actually looked at that area that has been discussed. Um, and, and one of the best ways of doing that is to look at the, the crash history. Um, so we got um, accident or crash data from the Tiverton Police Department as well as the Fall River Police Department from uh, pretty much south of the interchange of 24 all the way down to Eagleville Road, um, as well as in Safford Road up to uh, Hancock. And uh, there's, there's actually, in that area that, that's being discussed, there's almost no accidents. Oh, no, it's we that call it suicide <laughs> No, I think he's talking about the Massachusetts I, I, Right, down, yeah. right, down toward, yeah. <coughs> so there, so the, the, the data that we have from, the, like, like I said, the two police departments, that's what they've given to us, and there's, there's almost no accidents in that area. Most of the accidents in the area are actually, as you might expect, at the intersection where the roundabout is going to be going. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Actually, that is not the case. Maybe you will have to look in a, tr a different traffic study from right now. Uh, we call it, my neighbors and I call it, Suicide Alley. Nobody really wants to go down there anymore because nobody knows that two yellow lines are not supposed to be crossed. And there are 100, a minimum of 100 cases a day that happen there. Actually, they could pay for the safety of that road by giving fines to the people that are crossing the double yellow lines. Very simple. Or go ahead and um, take a median from all the way down so you can't cross all the way up to the roundabout so people are forced to go up to the roundabout and come back on the other side. Make it much safer for everybody. Think about it. Easy solution, cheap. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments and questions from the audience? Forever. Any other comments and questions from the audience? This will be your last chance, and I will close the hearing. Any other comments and questions from the audience? I will now close the public hearing for the Tiverton Town Council. Um, at this point, I'm going to ask our lawyer to um, explain to the council the resolution you have in front of you. <coughs> well, um, as has been discussed, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to vote on whether or not a um, resolution should be sent to the General Assembly. Uh, authorizing a question to be placed on the uh, ballot in November, not only here in Tiverton, 
uh, but also statewide under um, Section 22 of Article 6 of the Rhode Island Constitution and the Rhode Island General Laws 41914. Uh, the question is basic. It uh, shall an act to be approved which would authorize a facility owned by um, uh, 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 Twin River Tiverton uh, LLC to be located in the town of Tiverton at the intersection of William S. Canning Boulevard and Stafford Road to be licensed as a paramutual facility offering uh, state-operated video lottery games and state-operated casino gaming, such as table games. Further resolved that a copy of this resolution be sent to the Town of Tiverton's representatives and senators, the President of the Senate, the Speaker of the House, and the Governor of the State of Rhode Island. That's part one. Um, there has been a suggestion that uh, in case there is uh, changes uh, to this um, question by the General Assembly, uh, that language be inserted in the first paragraph, uh, that um, uh, it be in substantially similar form. That's part one. Uh, part two is uh, section 42-61.2-2.2 uh, through 2.7 uh, also would need to be amended. Many of the questions that were brought um, up uh, today, uh, tonight rather, uh, will be part of what the General Assembly does in enacting legislation uh, that would authorize us to go forward. Uh, several issues, uh, what the state's uh, um, portion of the revenue would be, what Tiverton's portion of the revenue would be, along with uh, all of the other issues that go along with it. Uh, this uh, law that I'm citing is the law that uh, authorizes the state to have uh, these type of uh, gaming facilities. It would need to be amended uh, to accommodate a facility in uh, Tiverton. It currently does not do that. It goes to Newport and Lincoln, and uh, those issues would be addressed. The reason for that uh, is that uh, voters here in Tiverton and statewide would have a good idea about what would be placed uh, at this facility and what the details would be uh, when they vote in November. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Madam President, please. One second, Joe, just for a minute. Um, that, sec that second res uh, resolution would be done later on down the road. We would have to send this resolve in first, is that correct? That's correct. This is the first step that allows the General Assembly to take the next step in the process. And of course, there's other steps too. Mm -hmm. Joe. Well, I want to, I want to, uh, try to resolve the uh, question of the guarantee of the revenue. Uh, it was proposed that uh, the legislature would, or well, Twin Rivers would suggest to the legislature for a $3 million minimum that would be you know, put forward through the legislature. The government would have to sign it. That would guarantee revenues to the town of $3 million. The problem with that is at any given time, if the legislature decides, they can decide to reduce that to two or one or whatever. So my thought is this. We're talking about changing the Constitution. We're talking about asking the people to allow this facility to be moved from Newport to Tevinen and the addition of the table games. And within this question, I would like in the wording that the town would receive a minimum of three million dollars so that the vote would be of the people it would be in the Constitution and we wouldn't be subject to any changes by the legislature that's yeah. my proposal and I think that the legislature should be forgiving and allow this to be part of the constitutional question Joe what I understand that's been explained to me but um, this vote tonight is simply yes we would like the people to vote during this next year from now until the vote. That's when the council does the second resolve, along with Twin Rivers, to get all the details. All this is saying this evening is yes, we support it going on the ballot. Well, During the next year, when we work out some of the things we need to work out, the voters will be totally educated. Meanwhile, we've we'll already authorized them to put it on the ballot. Once we send this resolve, we have already. Anything else, we'd have to negotiate with the legislature. What I'm saying is this should be on the ballot for people to vote. Okay. So in 2016, when the people take the vote, we're guaranteed a minimum, provided it passes, 
we're guaranteed a minimum that the legislature can't change. Right. I, I don't want to negotiate with the legislature. I want to, want to clarify one thing. This resolution isn't to amend the state constitution. No, no. It's authorized by the state constitution so that the vote can be taken pursuant to the state constitution. So um, I, I don't see that you can, in this process, amend the state constitution uh, to I'm, guarantee revenue streams. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This resolution is, is giving is asking the legislature to put the question on the ballot for the people of Tiverton to vote on. What I'm asking for is in addition to guarantee the three million dollars revenue. I'm not, I know this doesn't change it. it. This is requesting the legislature to put it on the ballot because it has to go on the ballot because it has, we have to change the constitution. It's, it's the way it works, okay? That's the mechanism put in place. People get the right to vote on it. If this is, if what I'm suggesting is added, when the people vote, that means that the town is guaranteed a minimum of three million, and the legislature cannot change that. It would have to be a vote of the people to change that. Yeah, it's a guaranteed for the town, and I know it can be done. I've spoken enough people about this. That's why I'm not ready to vote tonight, because I want somebody who can come in and explain it to the council that this is feasible. This will guarantee that we get the revenue that we're promised. And I'll go back, I don't, I'm going to go into it a little bit once we get to go into a little more comments. But I've got some examples where money was taken from this town. We had to close our town hall, for God's sakes, for a couple of days a week until we got through the tough times. So I know this can be done. This is a good idea. And once it's voted on, we're guaranteed the revenue that we're promised. Um, Madam President, if that in fact is going to be an issue I'd like to direct all of these questions to the town solicitor. It has always been my understanding that a piece of legislation can always be changed by the next legislature. The only way that we would be able to prevent, and prevent any changes in the legislation and to guarantee the payments would be to have a constitutional amendment. And so despite what Mr. Uh, Sousa is saying, he's asking for a constitutional amendment. Uh, I'd like to have a, a clarification as to exactly what our position is and what steps we would have to take to adopt the type of proposal that Mr. Uh, Mr. Souser is suggesting at this point. It has always been my understanding that any type of guarantee like this that would avoid legislative change would require a constitutional amendment. Uh, I don't think we have to address that tonight. That's not really the issue. Uh, but if any clarification is necessary, I'd like to get the clarification uh, from an attorney. Well, your, your statement is correct. You're here tonight under uh, General Laws 41914. If you were going to amend the state constitution, that would be an entirely separate process and would uh, follow an entirely separate track. So that's not really something you can do tonight, and it's not uh, going to affect the legislation that will need to be enacted uh, for this, and yes, the, the legislation can be changed later on. So all of your statements. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. In order, you have to change the Constitution in order to move Twin Rivers to Tiverton. That's why the voters are voting for it, correct? No, you don't. no. We're not, wait a minute, we're not making an amendment to the Constitution no. when we vote to change, to That's bring correct. the casino here. That's correct. So why are they asking the vote? Why are they asking for a vote of the people if, if the legislature has the power to do that? The Constitution um, states that if you're going to have a, a gaming facility, then it needs to go to a vote not only in the host community, but also statewide. Yeah. So you're not asking to amend the Constitution for that. You're following what the Constitution says uh, to authorize this type of a gaming facility. But, no, wait, wait a minute. In the table games, okay, Newport turned them down. Again, they'll have to vote as part of it to, to allow table games. All right, it says... In order to expand gambling, you need a vote of the people. That's a change. I'm confused because it seems to me if we're going to the vote to change the policy, we're, because, because that, you're actually changing what's in the Constitution. That's why I think we need an explanation to go beyond this. Well, that, I mean, Mr. Souser, is exactly why I'd like the explanation to come from an attorney who could understand the distinction between legislative action and a constitutional provision. But if the people My vote, position still is that if you're, the proposals that you're making involve a constitutional amendment, they don't simply involve a legislative change. Uh, I, I, I think the issue is totally irrelevant tonight in any event. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
guaranteeing the revenue that we've been promised is not irrelevant. That is, in before we allow the legislature to put this on the ballot, we should make sure that the people are going to get what they're promised. So don't call it irrelevant. It would require a and constitutional amendment, Mr. Souza. Well, despite what you say, that's, that, that's, that's a fact. It will take our advice from the town solicitor. Well, I think we need, I think we need, uh, I think we need to have a little more advice. I mean, quite frankly, I want to put this on the ballot. I want to see the people vote for it. But I don't want to see the people vote. And then a couple years down the line, we say, well, well you know, we know we're not going to get tax relief like people have described anyway. But it's going to help this town. And then revenue needs to be some, we need to come up with a mechanism to guarantee that the legislature, and if this goes for a vote to the people, if it's part of the language when people vote that A, will move the casino, and B, that the host community is guaranteed a minimum of 3%, I would think that the legislature cannot change that without another vote. But that Joe, seems to be binding. But Joe, as far as I understand, this is step one. The next step is what, what we are talking about going into negotiations, talking to the state legislation, working with Twin River. We can't even get to that step unless we decide to put it on the ballot. That's what I'm understanding. But once we agree to put it on the ballot, we're at the mercy of the legislature. No, we are not. Oh, no? What if they don't agree to give us this revenue? What do we do? They don't vote against it? No, I want to see this facility come down. Then the town needs to get together on election day and vote no. That's what they no, 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 no. That's not the answer. That is not the answer. This is, you know what? This is not about Twin River. They've done a good job. They put a good proposal. I'm happy and I'm willing to put them on the ballot. My problem is with the legislature. In the past, let's just take the car tax, for instance. Okay? We were guaranteed all this money from the state and we were going to reduce the car tax. And all of a sudden, they pulled the rug out and took the money back. So don't tell me the legislature will never change their mind and take money back from a town. There Mr. has to Susie, be a mechanism. You're saying exactly what we're saying, right. that the state legislature could always change legislation. Well, That's why what they can't change a vote of the people. But what we're suggesting is that any of the proposals that you're making at this point would require a constitutional convention. It would no, require, not a or, convention. I'm sorry, a constitutional no. amendment, not a convention, an amendment. Well, uh, <clears throat> Madam President. Nobody's questioning your concern, Mr. Souza, that a state legislature can change legislation. That's the purpose of having a state legislature. That's why communities like Dividend hopefully will have political clout, will have hopefully economic clout to, to make yeah. sure that those changes don't take place. Mm -hmm. But what you're suggesting, with all due respect, requires a constitutional amendment. It's not something that we can vote on, and it's not something that the voters right now will be in a position to vote on, or even the state legislature. Let's move on just and see if there's any other comments from the council. Mr. Pelletier. I just wanted to clarify so I understand that if, I, I think what I understand Joe is saying, you want to tack on an amendment that would say something to the effect of, with a guaranteed $3 million uh, revenue stream. My question to Tony is, what mechanism would allow us to do that, and what enforcement mechanism would be at our disposal in the event that that did not occur? Uh, the, the issue of um, what portion Tiverton gets is, is going to be embodied in the legislation. And that's something that can change, and it's just a legislative process. And I'm not so sure that, that there can be guarantees on what's going to happen in the future. You can take a look at the past and see what's happened. That has not happened uh, to uh, the, the uh, Lincoln facility. But is it a possibility? Yes. I, I think uh, what, what I'm learning through this process is if we were dealing with uh, a private enterprise, we would have a contract with them that, mm -hmm. that would stipulate these sort of arrangements. But we're dealing with the, the state of Rhode Island, and so um, they can change the, the move the goalposts or change the game or do whatever they'd like as they go. So. Well, one thing you might want to consider that the town of Lincoln does not have is a host community agreement. I think that would give you more um, confidence in uh, uh, what type of relationship you have with the uh, uh, Twin River facility uh, if there's a concern at what happens at the state level. Mr. So with, oh, sorry. Explain sorry, to us yeah, what yeah. a host agreement is. Is that an, because we're, structurally, we're 
uh, the revenues we would be getting, not from, from property taxes or any local stuff, but the revenues we would be getting from gaming would be based on a relationship we have with the state of Rhode Island. Because they're the owner of the casino. That's correct, For lack yes. of a better term, the Twin River Management Group is just the management entity. Um, That's correct, yes. For lack of a better term. So would this be a private agreement we have with Twin River Management Group or? Well, you can structure a wide variety of the issues uh, that you'd have, but ultimately you're correct. Um, the state, uh, this is a state uh, uh, facility and the um, revenues are set in the, in the statute. So who's, so who's this host community agreement? Who's the other party of, the, of this host community be Twin River. Okay. Twin River LLC. Any other questions or comments from the council? <laughs> Madam Mr. President, could the solicitor explain the host city theory? What, what does that mean? Uh, what some communities do uh, for uh, developments of this nature and uh, facilities of this nature is they enter into an agreement uh, with the uh, facility uh, governing uh, some of these types of issues that uh, I think Councilman Souza has brought up. When construction will take place, is it contingent on um, the okay. roundabout being built, things of that nature. And you know, it's appropriate to take a look at, as I said, uh, Lincoln does not have one. Uh, the proposed uh, casino in West Warwick that was not approved by the voters did have one. So I think it's, it's one of the things you probably want to take a look at between now and November. Okay. It's something you may want to do, something you may not want to do, but a variety of the issues <coughs> excuse me, that have been brought up by Councilman Susan and others could be addressed in a host community agreement. Okay. You can never, however, not have a relationship with a facility of this nature that isn't governed by the legislation. Right. Any other questions from the council? Are you done, Dave? Yeah. I, I have just a few more questions. First, uh, uh, maybe getting ahead, but this facility would go through design review, through planning, I'm assuming. This, they would. Once this facility is built, or when a facility is being built prior, it would have to go through design review. In other words, a master plan be submitted? That's correct, yes. So. It's a major land development. All right, so I, I, I see a problem there because of staffing in town. That's something we're gonna have to look at. Uh, just to address the traffic, uh, I just say that I worked in Newport for 25 years. I worked on Conno, off Connell Highway, probably past High Lie, and then Newport Grand 10,000 times going up and down the Admiral Cardinals Highway. Also belonged to a private club down in that area where I'd go on Friday and Saturday nights, and I could say that I've pretty much never seen a traffic jam in front of that facility, even when they had some of the events. Pro the thing is, that, and I've been there myself uh, numerous times back in the day, uh, watching High Line, but the traffic, the thing about the traffic is that uh, not everybody comes and goes at the same time. So, I mean, it's, if you're going to play the, the, the games or whatever, you, you come, you do your thing, and then you leave it. Unless you have large events like boxing, like you do down at Foxwood, or, you know, concerts and things like that, you don't see a grand exit. And generally, uh, on Friday and Saturdays is when you're going to see a lot of your traffic, evenings and Sundays, and some bus traffic. So, I mean, there is going to be an impact in that area. I live on Hancock Street. I drive past there going to work for years, and now I'm semi-retired. I'm around that neighborhood all the time working on my own stuff. So, it, I know there's going to be an impact in traffic. And the main thing is that we have a guarantee from DOT that we get a properly constructed turn uh, roundabout I want to say rotary but roundabout and if you notice the traffic trends around the state you'll notice that uh, when you're going into La for instance one lane is actually better I know somebody had talked about you know two lane road and everything you want to slow the traffic down if you look across the Quinnick Island they've actually reduced a lot of the two lane roads down it slows the traffic down coming into the roundabout and I found that the, once they changed the rotary to a roundabout, 
in Newport, besides a few drunks driving over the curbs and things, that it actually made it easier to get around, except when the base is backed up. But uh, I never saw the type of traffic that people are predicting we're going to see. So I, I, you know, I think if we can, that's some of the things we need to work on. We need to guarantee, I think, that we have a date certain when that roundabout will be, and it should be before the vote. It should be, I mean, before, you know, in uh, 2016, before we go to the polls, DOT should have that thing damn near built to show, to show the town. Because if we turn it down, I don't want to hear, well, you should have voted for the casino. Now you've got to wait another decade to get the roundabout. The last thing is, uh, got the design review. Yep, that was my last thing. Thank you. Madam, Madam President. Uh, Councilor <laughs> Chabot. Thank you, Madam President. I think we are all aware that what's before the council tonight is to put the question on the ballot so that the people can decide. And after reviewing my notes from the people who have spoken at this public hearing, whether you're for or against it, I think the overwhelming uh, opinion of the people here is that it's up to the voters to decide this, not to have seven people that sit here decide this for you. This is, there's a lot of issues around this, whether it's moral or economic. Uh, there is, if this is put on the ballot, there is basically almost a whole year for either side to present their case to the people, whether you're for it or whether you're against it. That gives you that amount of time to talk amongst yourself and to either advocate for or against. So I think it's very important that we proceed at this point, and I'd like to make a motion to accept the resolution as amended with the uh, added wording in substantially similar form and the um, name change from Town River to Twin River. Was that a, was yeah, that a motion? I did that. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. I would just like to say that the Tiverton Town Council is aware of your concerns and we are going to work diligently to make sure that we get the best bang for our buck out of this deal. And not to worry, we will be doing that throughout this year. Um, any other comment? Just very quickly. Just explain this to me just very quickly. Once we vote on this, we authorize the legislature, as we request that the legislature put this on the ballot. Correct. There's no way to do anything as I was described. I just, I just, just clarify, once we prove this, the only one we can negotiate from that point as far as revenues is the legislature. We have no, I, I just thought we had some leverage here to make sure that the legislature was going to do the right thing. Once we. I, I, honestly, I think your leverage is, is that it's got to be voted on. That's it. So the question becomes, if it's an adverse, um, if it's an adverse outcome in the General Assembly, the election still has to take place. Yeah. So that's your leverage. But once it's built, it's built, and it, it, in future years, if revenues drop, we have no say. And that's that was my point. I just, I was hoping in some way we could bind. That would that would be a constitution. Can I, um, can I just but keep in mind, as we're working on this all year long, the public will be fully aware of what we're doing and what steps we're taking. So if it doesn't look like a good deal, the public will vote no. If it looks like it's something that's going to benefit us, I imagine the public will vote yes. But we have a whole year to be out there and tell everybody what's going on. I just have two quick comments on the, uh, the language. Uh, and then I'll move on to substantive comments. But what we've just moved is uh, a resolution that would create this language um, for the ballot, but we give the caveat in substantially similar form, which allows the legislature to change um, the language that we've asked for them without them having to come back. Is that? 
That's correct, but uh, I have to say that this language that you have is the language that's embodied in the, in the statute. Yeah. What I'm saying, if by some stroke of uh, this body we decided to put a, a clause in here that said and guarantee three million dollars, the legislature could take it out. Correct. Right? That's correct, yes. Okay. And the second thing is, I only want to point out that the relationship we have with the state of Rhode Island, and, and while we're talking about this, it's kind of a, it's a strange conversation to have because we're asking the state of Rhode Island to put on the ballot um, this question, and we're also trying to figure out how to guarantee some revenue stream. We're making a deal with the state of Rhode Island. They have the power in this situation. And so to, to somehow hold their feet to the fire, um, it, it just seems like a strange concept in negotiating or in contract making because they're the, they're the, they're the guys with all the juice and, and we're asking them for a little help in, in getting this on the ballot. I don't think there would be any way that, that while they make the laws, they control the laws and they uh, enforce the laws <laughs> so they can do whatever they want. Well, uh, Madam President, uh, I, I, I don't need to laugh about I, I, it. But. I think the point is we're not having an election, uh, not having a vote on this for one year. We have one year to work with the state legislature to see whatever assurances or guarantees, if we want to use that word, we can achieve over that one year period. It's always been my understanding, as you point out, Brett, we really have no real power no. other than in the political sense or perhaps in an economic sense. But it's always been my understanding, for, and the town solicitor can, can uh, correct me on this, that tomorrow morning the state legislature could take away Tiverton's town charter. What's to prevent that after 300 years? Absolutely nothing under our Constitution. So in that sense, Brett, you're right. But we do have one year in which the state legislature will have every incentive to guarantee that they're going to get their payments. And as I recall from Mr. Taylor, we were told that from our op proposed operation, the revenue to the state would be something in the range of 45 to 70 million dollars. I, I, I think that that would be putting their feet to the fire, Brett. I also yeah, I, 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 I agree with all of those things, and I think that is the task going forward if this vote passes, that you, you do make the best deal and you do the diligence and you craft an arrangement that works for everybody and benefits the town and protects the town as best you possibly can. I don't want anyone going away, though, under the illusion that we will somehow uh, prevail in some legal action against the state of Rhode Island because they, they were, through legislative means, exercising their rights. I would think the response to a legal action would probably be to take our charter away so that we would have no standing. <laughs> right, I'd like right. to say something too. We do have slate legislation, slaters from Tivin and they work very hard for us. They're going to be up there and, and they're going to be persuading, persuading, I'm sorry, their colleagues to support Tivin. And, and I have faith that they will do that. Thank you. Thank you. Madam President, Madam President, um, I, I think we have uh, an opportunity in a lifetime, um, and not to get a casino in Tiverton, that, that's not my main concern, it's to give the voters of Tiverton the opportunity if they want a casino in Tiverton. And you know, I, I think that that's a great opportunity. I'd like to see more of that done where we, where we can do it, because I think we would get more commercial development in this town if we gave it out to the people than if we just decided ourselves sometimes. Um, so I would like to move the question. Uh, uh, Ma Madam well, President, I just had one the question. Well, we're, we're moving the question. Uh, the question's been moved. Well, well that's not how that that's works. That's not how it works. Yeah, I have to have a second to move the question. Do I have a second to move the question? Second. Motion to be made and second to move the question. All those in favor? Of moving the question? Voting, yes. Voting on it. Voting. Without any further discussion. 
Now, I don't want to cut off discussion. If someone has something well, that's to say. Well, there's no more discussion except for counselors. Well, I don't even know if everybody on the council has had an opportunity to speak. We okay. haven't. Tony, what was the vote, Madam President? I moved, I moved it. What's the vote? Make sure that the council knows that they're voting on to close discussion and take a vote. I thought I the vote will be to close discussion. All discussion. So motion's been made and second to close discussion. All those in favor? Passes. Against. It passes. So now I have a motion on the floor. Motion to remain in second to accept the resolve. All those in favor? Against. Six to one, motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. I like a motion to adjourn. So moved. Um, second. Do I have a second to adjourn? All those in favor? Thank you.